Amen, amen. Guys, how are we feeling? Great. Guys, you made it here on a rainy Sunday, so congratulations. We understand you could be anywhere else in the world, but you're here, and for that reason, seriously, we're pumped up, and we're so grateful. But I don't want to waste your time. We had to get to groups, and we got great things ahead of us with God's Word, so let's open up to Jonah chapter 2, verse number 1. Jonah chapter 2, verse numero uno. You can type there, you can flip there, or you can check it out on the screen behind me. Let's read. It says this at verse 1, going to verse 2. I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Everybody say, he answered me. <laughs> Out of the belly of Shoel I cried, and you heard my voice. I want to talk to you guys today, which also is the title of the message, so you should write this down. I want to talk to you guys today about bouncing back after a bad decision. Bouncing back after a bad decision, a mistake, a mess up, a thing that you look back and say, Ugh, why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why did I act that way? Why did I lie? Why did I, you name it. Bouncing back after a decision like that. Turn to somebody on your left and right and tell them, that was a bad decision. <laughs> We've all made bad decisions. Let me tell you a story about a time I made a bad decision. I was pretty vulnerable last time I spoke at Bible study, so I felt like I might as well be vulnerable again. So, when I was a sophomore in high school, I was in a dating relationship that at one point just got pretty unhealthy, uh, at least deemed by each other's parents. And so what happened was, is that, you know, nothing horrific was really happening, but it was just deemed to the point of like, it was a distraction, it was taking us away from the important things that we had going on, sports, school, you name it, taking focus out of areas where it should have been and putting focus on each other. We just weren't a great couple in general, so our parents wisely decided to break us up. And it's probably not a strange thing for many of you, I'm sure you've had you yourself or your friends maybe, Parents came in and broke you guys up and were like, hey guys, this is over. You know, kaput, relationship's done, thank you so much. Uh, don't reach out to her, don't hang out with her, this is over. So, what did I do? My mom said that and her parents said the same thing. On this great day of Mother's Day, what did I do in response to my mom telling me I couldn't date my girlfriend any longer? Did I listen to her? No. What did I do? I did the opposite, of course. I lied to her, I went behind her back, I changed my girlfriend's name on my phone to something else so that way she wouldn't pick up on the fact that I was texting my girlfriend. I would say that I was going to a friend's house when in reality I was going to hang out with my girlfriend at some other public venture, right? And for probably a few weeks to a month, you know, we snuck around, hung out, texted, tried to maintain like the sense of a relationship. And my mom would ask me like, are you by chance still texting so-and-so? And I'd be like, no, like, what? Mom, of course, like, we're broken up, you know? Of course not. So a few weeks goes by. Um, she, she checks my phone like any of your moms has the authority to do with your phone because they pay for that phone and they are also, you're also under the roof. So she checks my phone. She was like, Nicholas, my mom call me Nicholas. Nicholas, why are you telling that you love your friend Joey with heart emojis? He's just a really good friend, you know? <laughs> That's interesting. You guys can get married one day and everything, huh? <laughs> so what happened for me was much worse of a result. I'm talking grounding, I'm talking loss of trust, I'm talking ramifications that I could have never been ready for. Why? Because I made a bad decision, but also perpetuated that bad decision by making multiple more bad decisions. Everybody say bad decision. We've all made bad decisions. Some small, others massive. Relationship decisions, who you decided to date, who you decided to stay with, who you decided to hang out with, where you decided to go on a particular Friday night is prom season. Mm. Being at a place where you shouldn't be, drinking stuff you shouldn't be drinking, smoking stuff you shouldn't be smoking, being around individuals that you know is dangerous and doing things that you know compromises the purity, the morality, integrity that you say as a Christian that we abide by. How you talk to a parent, how you talk to your siblings, how you treat your friends, the things you've done, the fallout. Bad decisions, right? We've all made bad decisions. Some small, some like, uh, I kind of kicked myself over that. I shouldn't have done that. I should have acted differently. And some where it's like, I can't tell anybody this. I watched something I should have never seen. I, I, I acted in a way that I could never bring to light. 
We've all made bad decisions. Newsflash. None of us are perfect. We're all flawed. We've all messed up. And in the same way, the person that we're talking about in this passage today, Jonah, the prophet Jonah, messed up in a bad way too. And I want to jump into the text, but before we can jump into the text, we have to know the what? The smart Bible scholars. Got to know the context. A couple contexts of this real quick. Is that the story of Jonah in the Bible teaches us about bouncing back from a bad decision. Why? Because Jonah, the prophet, which one of the only prophets, if you're a Bible scholar here, maybe you learned this, one of the only prophets in the Bible that he was chosen by God but completely wanted to disregard the calling that God had put on his life. Interesting. It shows you that sometimes it's not about your ability when it comes to the call of God. It's really not even about your desire or what you feel like you want or want to be a part of. Sometimes it's just God called you to do it and you're going to do it. And Jonah's a prime example of that as a prophet. And Jonah's called to go preach to the people of Nineveh. He's, he's told them to go give the good news, share my word, bring them to salvation, and do the thing because I care about the people of Nineveh. And Jonah said, you know what, God? I hear you. Gotcha. Message read, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go the other way. So he ends up on this boat. And the people on this boat are like, dude, it's storming really, really bad right now. What could this be? Maybe it's the guy who disobeyed God and God's mad at him and therefore we're all on the path of God getting mad at this dude. So let's throw this guy off the boat. So this guy gets thrown off the boat, thrown into the water, and he gets eaten by fish. If you're like, what? He got eaten by fish? Me and Caden were having a conversation. Is this allegorical? Is this factual? Point is, there's debate on whether or not he actually was eaten by fish or whether this is a symbolic situation in scripture that's meant to teach us a lesson. Either way, there's points to be learned from this particular passage on what it looks like to bounce back from bad decisions. So I want to give you three facts before we go into group on what it looks like to make a bad decision, on how to bounce back. Number one, three facts on bad decisions is this. Bad decisions have bad consequences no matter what. Bad decisions have bad consequences no matter what. I want to read to you from verse one. We can pop that verse. I think we have it on the screen here. He says, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, which is really sweet. Verse number one. He was sorry, but he still had to sit in the belly of the fish for a few days. Why? Well, one, God needed to teach him a lesson. Yeah, he's trying to like get something through to him. He's trying to like show him something that he needs to learn about how to obey him. Yeah, sure, whatever. But also because Jonah had to pay the price that comes when you make a bad decision. Here's what I want to say to you, lovingly. You made, you made a bad decision. And you may be sorry. Sure. You may have repented. Absolutely. You prayed and apologized. Cool. That doesn't mean that you don't face the natural consequences of what you did. That doesn't mean that your failures and mistakes don't have fallout. Sure, God forgives you for doing that thing, but your friend may never will. You may have lost your temper, and yeah, you'll probably lose that relationship. God forgives you, but your girlfriend don't. That's the reality. That's the world that we live in. Yeah, you may cheat on that test, and you may be really apologetic about it, but you're still going to fail it. You may cut corners at work. You're still going to get fired. Because bad decisions have bad consequences, and people don't wrestle well with this. They think, God is punishing me. No, 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 no. God's not punishing you for your sin. He forgives you. He loves you. He understands that. But we still have a natural fallout of the mistakes that we make in this world. And we can't get mad at God when we're facing the natural consequences of the choices that we made. Your life is the sum of your choices. Nothing more, nothing less. Don't be mad when the natural consequences come because it's a reality. With Jonah, he's a prophet of God. Pretty close with him, I would say. It was like, God, I'm sorry. And God's like, all right, that's cool. Stay in that fish, boy. <laughs> sorry. You messed up. I love you. Go ahead and stay in that fish. <laughs> now, if you get swallowed by a fish, then maybe some God stuff. But if you get fired from your job, that's just life. Number, that's number one. Number two, when a whole of bad decisions... The best thing to do is stop digging. When you put yourself on a hole of your bad decisions, stop digging. Verse 2a, I love this. It says this in the, in the scripture. He says, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me. Everybody say, he answered me. He answered me. Jonah gave up the gig and cried out to God. He's like, I got to stop, dig stop trying to keep digging this pit that I put myself in for all of us. Look, the best thing we can do after we make a bad decision is to stop. A lot of us, when we make a bad decision, we fall morally or whatever it may be, whatever your thing is, we think, ah, oh, I'm never going to make it back into the good graces of whoever I've wronged. 
It's going to take me forever to earn my respect back, the trust back, whatever. So therefore, we're so afraid of the consequence that we continue to lie and sneak around and be malicious to hopefully get away with it in the end. Guess what? When you dig a hole, there's no access, avenues out of it. There's no shortcuts. There's nothing. The only way out of a hole is back up. And the, and the deeper you dig, the longer it's going to take for you to get out of that hole. But the best thing you can do is not to try to look for a shortcut, but is to stop digging. If you're in sin right now, if you're messing up, if you're in the midst of a mistake, here's what I'll tell you. Stop. Don't lie about it anymore. Go to the person you've wronged, or if it's a private sin, maybe you're watching stuff on the internet you're not supposed to, whatever that looks like. Find accountability and be honest with somebody about what you're doing and get, give it up. It's over. Stop digging. And that's what Jonah did. He said, God, I'm sorry. Okay, I get it. I messed up. I'm in the belly of this fish. It's over. I'm sorry. That's what we all need to do. Just turn around. And God, God's got you. He's still with you. Which brings to number three. God doesn't give up on you despite the dumb things you do. God doesn't give up on you despite the dumb things you do. Gosh, I love this. And I'll finish this verse out. It says, Out of the belly of Shoel I cried, and you heard my voice. In the midst of your mistakes, God still loves you. On your worst day, God still loves you. He still has a plan for you. Your life is not defined by the mistakes that you make, and God's love is not predicated on the dumb things that you do. What is it predicated upon? God's love for you is predicated upon the fact that he loves you much more than you deserve, and he still has a plan for you despite the dumb things you do. I'm a living example of that, of a person who has made plenty of mistakes and caused plenty of problems for other people out of my own selfishness, sin, and stupidity, frankly, that I've done to people to wrong them. And God has never left me. And despite the thing that you're in, even if it's as heinous or as malicious as you could ever imagine, God still loves you and he's still with you. And he still has a plan for you. It's a long road back, but he still has a plan for you. So as you go into group, discuss this with your leader. Ask them this question. Look them right in the eye and say, leader, what's a bad decision you made when you were a teenager? And how did you bounce back from it? What's a bad decision you made when you were a teenager? Please, tell me, give me the juicy stuff. It's safe space here. What's a bad decision you made when you're a teen? And how did you bounce back? How did you navigate that? And guess what? Don't miss this as we close. In a world where bad decisions are a reality, the worst decision you'll ever make is not trusting in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's not accepting his forgiveness, receiving his grace, and embracing his love for you that he bestowed for you on the cross. So if you're in here today, and you're like, I don't know Jesus. I don't know if I'm forgiven by God. I don't even know if I'm 110% sure I'm going to heaven when I die. Please, please, please just know you can be sure. You can be loved. You can be forgiven by the Lord Jesus Christ. And he loves you and wants a relationship with you. So if that's you, please, please, please come up to the stage right after this. Come find me. Come talk to me. I'd love to have a conversation with you about what that looks like. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for these awesome students. I pray for them, Lord, as they go into groups.